कॉटलिंग टेल रिकर्शन टेल रिकर्शन इज ए जेनेरिक कॉन्सेप्ट रादर दैन द फीचर ऑफ कॉटलिंग लैंग्वेज सम प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस इंक्लूडिंग कॉटलिंग यूज इट टू ऑप्टिमाइज रिकर्सिव कॉल्स वेर एज अदर लैंग्वेजेस सच एज पाइथन डू नॉट सपोर्ट देम सो व्हाट इज ए टेल रिकर्शन सो दैट इज ऑल्सो अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट एंड दैट इज अ जेनेरिक वन so it is not a feature of kotlin in case of tail recursion we do the recursive call at the end of the function so that there is no need to come back to the function once again to do the remaining pending work so we need not to define any stack data structure in the computer's memory to store or restore those variable values for each and every instance of the recursive call and that will bring betterment in our program execution In normal recursion you perform all recursive calls first and calculate the result from the return value at the last hence you do not get result until all recursive calls are made so here we are having one tail recursion you can find that function fibonacci n of the type integer a is type long b is type long and it returns long it actually gives the nth fibonacci number of this series and this is the if expression you have written and the corresponding value will be returned as well i think it is better we shall show and discuss this very function execution in our demonstration to tell compiler to perform tail recursion in kotlin it need to mark the function with tail rec modifier so let us go for the demonstration now and we shall show that how this tail rec modifier can be used in our coding to have this tail recursion so here is the demonstration for you let us discuss about the tail recursion at first we know that tail recursion is a special kind of recursion where the recursive call is the very last thing in the function a normal function on the other hand has to have a stack frame so that the compiler knows to come back to it and have all the necessary variable values after the recursive call is finished so in case of tail recursion always we shall try to put the recursive call at the last and we should not have any pending job with the recursive call otherwise what will happen the compiler will have to keep a stack to keep all the variables there intact so that they can be reused after coming back from the call so here you can find that we are considering the fibonacci numbers so here we are having the place values so place values are ranging from 1 2 3 4 in this way i have written up to 11 and these are the respective fibonacci terms so 0 1 we know that in case of fibonacci numbers each and every number is the sum of its previous two numbers in the series so consider this 5 so 5 is nothing but this 5 is nothing but sum of this 2 and 3 So 13 is nothing but sum of its previous two numbers, that is 5 and 8, and we have considered that the first two numbers will be 0 and 1 respectively. So here, if we give the value of num is equal to 10, so then we are expecting that the Fibonacci number which we'll be getting is 34. We have executed the code here, so the Fibonacci number is 34 at position number 10. I can re-execute it once again. so here you can find that that at position number 10 the number will be 34 so in this way the program is giving the correct answer so now let me explain this one so num is equal to 10 here so it is of type integer and fibonacci this function has been called and the output will be kept in the variable output and output is of the type of long so here we are passing three parameters one is num that is 10 here and next one is 0 and next one is 1 so it will be assigned to a and this one will be assigned to b here and a and b are of the type long and num is of the type of integer and it is getting assigned to n so it returns long here so if return if so here we have used the if expression you can easily follow that here we have used the if expression here so if n is equal to is equal to 1 so if we are at the first terms and then i'll be returning a because the value of a is 0 here else fibonacci n minus 1 b a plus b so now we are, we are decreasing this value of n by 1 and here this b will be the first term and a plus b will be the second term in this way we are going on calculating and when this value of n will become 1 after decreasing 
when it will come to value 1 then a will be returned as well so in this way my program is giving us the correct answer let me show you the another program where we are using this tell rec this is the keyword where which, which has been used with this function so here this value of num is equal to 5 and fact is of the type of long and factorial cal I'm passing this num as input argument and fact will be the output that will be assigned and then dollar fact will be printed here so if I execute this code I'm getting this output that factorial of 5 is 120 so here we are having this num is getting assigned to int here so that is a factorial cal we are getting and term which is having a default argument here we have we haven't passed this term here because it is having a default argument so term with the, will have the value 1 here and this particular factorial cal returns long as output so here also we have used the if expression here so return if num is equal to is equal to 1 so if the value of num is 1 then term dot too long too long will be returned so if the num has got value 1 then term dot too long will be returned otherwise we shall go for num minus 1 and term star num we are getting this one so what do why term star num because initially you know the term is having the value 1 so term into num will go on multiplied and that will be the second argument and here this value of num is getting decremented by 1 so first time what will happen if this num is having the value 5 so 5 is getting assigned to num so num is having the value 5 and term is having the default argument 1 so 1 into 5 so 5 will be there will be returned there and that will be assigned to term because that is the second argument and here the value of num has become 4 so next time 5 into 4 will take place so 20 will be will be uh, passed and that will be assigned to term here then 20 into 3 will be taking place in this way the factorial is going on calculated and when this num will become 1 then term dot too long will be returned so in this way we are finding this factorial of 5 is equal to 120 so in this program we have shown you that how to use the tail rec in our code and how to use the tail recursion in our kotlin thanks for watching this video